we are going to start the last session of this wonderful conference. And we we'll start with Elisabetta Palladino from Catania. So we're ahead. Thank you very much. So first of all, let me thank the organizers very much for the kind invitation and for the wonderful conference of, of, of these days. And um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a, um, was said, I'm, I'm, I'm based in Catania, which is the town you, you, see, you see here. It's uh, uh, behind the Hetna, which is one of the highest active volcanoes of Europe, and there is close to the sea, so it's a, a nice place also to work. And the work I'm going to present has been done together with Francesco Pellegrino, who is actually an expert in, 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 in graphene, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, Pino, and Pino Falci, who you no. Okay, so uh, motivation and outline of this presentation. Um, uh, there has been some interest on graphene Josephson junctions in recent years, and uh, uh, there are several reasons for that. Uh, I don't need to convince you that uh, graphene Josephson junctions are a very interesting um, a, a heterostructure to study fundamental phenomena related to proximity and superconductivity in a two dimensional material and that uh, uh, graphene-based uh, uh, gate modes are very promising from the point of view of, of course, gate tunability, control uh, by um, microwave characterization, uh, resilience uh, to strong magnetic fields, and uh, the possible extensibility. Now, uh, the, the topic I'm going to tell you about today um, is on um, these systems, and in particular what we did was to investigate the effect of a dilute ensemble of uh, microscopic impurities, which we model with the Anderson model and using the dirac bogoliubov degen model for the graphene. And what we, we found is how the current phase relation is modified by the presence of these uh, microscopic impurities, which we model quantum-mechanically, and how this, uh, their presence influence the characteristics of the uh, graphene current phase relation, in particular the skewnets and, and critical currents, which have a peculiar temperature dependence uh, in due to these impurities. Uh, this is a, a type of transport analysis. I will also show how the uh, current noise spectrum may give a, a very precise uh, spectroscopic characterization of these uh, impurities. If uh, time will, will allow, I will also pass in a second part of, the, of this presentation to discuss another possible mechanism of current fluctuations in short ballistic graphene Josephson junctions, in particular critical current fluctuations, due to a um, phenomenological model in this case, which is often used uh, starting from semiconducting devices, which is called McWhorter model. It's a typical model which leads to 1 over F noise, and we found that it can give rise also to 1 over F noise in the critical current under this condition with peculiar features related to the statistics of the fluctuations. But to start with, let's uh, summarize briefly, we already seen this picture a number of times during this conference, what uh, ballistic graphene Josephson junctions are. We consider, as I said, the short junction regime where the um, supercurrent flows because of proximi uh, proximity effect on graphene and the uh, formation of coherent superposition of electrons and, and all uh, due to uh, undrive processes at the um, inter constructing interference of undrive processes at the normal superconducting interfaces on the two sides. This coherent superposition gives rise to what we know uh, as undrive bound states. The supercurrent which flows depends on the phase difference of the, um, of the uh, energies of these uh, under bound states, and, um, which is written down here, which is um, related to the microscopic characteristics of the junction, in particular to the transmittance of, of the junction, which is given by these two K factors. Let me just uh, anticipate that due to the fact that these K factors depend on the density of carriers in graphene, uh, these fluctuations or carrier density in graphene may give rise fluctuations of the critical current, which will be the, the last topic of this, of this presentation. Now, this, uh, oops, the other way around. Now, uh, this type of, 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 of devices have been implemented uh, by using very 
clean um, interfaces between uh, graphene and superconductors via encapsulating graphene in hexagonal boron nitride, which allows to have one dimensional edge contact. And uh, this type of, of setup has allowed the uh, measurement of the current phase relation, which, as you see, has a characteristic non sinusoidal behavior as a difference of what we are used to in uh, Josephson tunnel junction. Uh, this, um, tu this tuneness is tunable via the gate voltage because this is embedded in, oops, in, a, in, a, in, in a circuit. And, uh, and in addition, depends on temperature. This is a sketch of how the skewness, which is a measure of the non-sinusoidality non of the current phase relation as a function of temperature, looks like in this specific experiment. And you see that whereas the overall qualitative trend is, is predicted by the uh, Tito benacker bogolubo degen approach, it's quantitatively not, not in perfect agreement. Then let me just mention a couple of very recent experiments uh, which pointed out the possible presence of microscopic impurities in this setup. This is uh, an experiment done by the Oliver's group. Here they have a gate moon and the gate moon with aluminum electrodes. They managed to uh, observe, to, to perform coherent control of this gate moon. And in particular here I show the uh, Ramsey fringes uh, experiment which they did they get a rather short coherence time in this, in this experiment. But what uh, matters for what I'm going to tell you is that uh, when they perform the time discrete Fourier transform of this signal, which is what you see here, on top of the uh, frequencies which they expect from the frequency mismatch due to the Ramsey procedure, they also observe some unexplained uh, additional frequencies which could have different, uh, different sources. What they say here is that uh, they might be associated with coupling to spurious to level system or in principle also excitations or a two photon transitions in the, in the, in the heter heterostructure. So it's, it's, it's open what the origin is. On a different setup with a different superconductor, these are uh, experiments at MIT, um, what they observed also are uh, effects possibly due to microscopic quantum dots, they say. And this is, for instance, uh, um, a measure which they report on the conductance. In, in principle, this should reveal the band structure of graphene, but these big spikes point, oops, point to the possible presence of uh, spurious effect. So this is one of the, uh, these are one of the reasons why we, uh, we looked at this problem. So let's come to the model we use. So the sketch of the setup is uh, here. We have a graphene layer in gray uh, superposed to uh, electrodes. So this is gray is the, is the junction, and then there is a substrate. Uh, we consider the short junction regime. Uh, I'm going to tell later on which is the precise condition. We describe graphene with the usual dirac bogoliubov of the Gen approach. It's written down here. This Z corresponds to the Valley index. And we have the usual fermionic uh, field operators. Uh, we assume from the very beginning that both the um, gap and the uh, electrostatic potential have a step-like <coughs> behavior uh, in the different part of the setup. And here phi is the phase difference on the two sides of the junction. Now, in the short junction limit, it's written down here, we know that we have a, a, a series of discrete undrive bound states, and we also have a continuum. But in this regime, the continuum does not depend on the phase difference, so continuum states do not carry supercurrent. So we're only uh, interested in the uh, underbound states, which are the ones which carry, which carry supercurrent, and we write the effective Hamiltonian of the underbound states in this simple form. Here we have the uh, under levels here. Uh, Z, again, is the Valley index, and K is the momentum, the transverse uh, momentum. Then we have to include uh, impurities, and we model impurities with the Anderson model, which is a model which has been used to describe defects in, in graphene. Uh, it's written down here. This is the case where we suppose there is a single energy level for these impurities, but we will pass later on to a case where we consider a distribution of energies. The interaction between the graphene and impurities is expressed in terms of a tunneling uh, Hamiltonian, which is written down here. 
So it describes single electron tunneling between the Anderson level describing the impurities and the, uh, and the under bound states. And uh, you see it is expressed here in terms of a four by four matrix. A and B are the two graphene sublattices, whereas, um, okay, plus minus are already uh, defined. And uh, we assume a short range interaction potential, which comes simply if you take a tie banding type of description for the graphene, and you assume that the impurity sits at one of the carbon side, but a random place. This results in a um, potential, which depends on position. It depends on a tunneling amplitude, tau naught. It depends on the area of the unit cell. M and uh, MD are some coefficients related to the two graphene sublattices. And this is a phase factor coming from the hexagonal symmetry of the, of the graphene. Overall, we get a total Hamiltonian, which has a block structure. On the diagonal, we have on the diagonal, we have under bound states impurities on the other side, and then we have off-diagonal terms, which describe, of course, the tunneling. Our goal is to find the Green's function corresponding to this Hamiltonian, which is itself a quite big matrix. Since we are only interested in uh, supercurrent carrying states, we uh, consider only the block, which is related to the under bound states, and we call it under bound states Green function which is just the projection of the total Green function on this subspace. And we can express this Green function in terms of an effective Hamiltonian, which is written down here. It consists of the under part and then the projection of the interaction part. For the case of a disordered ensemble of impurities, so we assume that these impurities are randomly distributed in the graphene, so it means a random distribution of the positions where this impurity sits and all the other and also of these other parameters which describe the short range interaction potential. And then we get an effective Hamiltonian which looks like this. It's expressed again in terms of the um, fermionic operators for the under bound states, which are written down here. The tunneling amplitude is here and the energy so far localized energy of the impurity comes of course, we do not know how these impurities are distributed in energy, so we consider a broad distribution, or not necessarily, by the way, a distribution of energies, and uh, we describe it like this, and the result in the effective Hamiltonian of, is of having a prefactor which depends on the impurities' energies in this way. Next step is to evaluate the uh, current, the equilibrium supercurrent. This is a quite tricky calculation, I have to say, which is mainly responsible of Francesco Pellegrino, but the sketch of the result is very, is very simple and nice. So we start from the current operator. This is not uh, our original result, it was, it was known. The current operator consists of a part which is diagonal in the under bound states Hamiltonian and a part which is off diagonal and comes in whenever the transmission is not unitary. Then we average this operator over the equilibrium distribution of this hybridized state, and we get an expression for the current which is similar in a structure as the one you know in the absence of impurities, but of course we have an effect of impurity which is included in a spectral function. <coughs> okay, this is quite standard as a result, let's say. The spectral function has this uh, structure. Of course, it depends on the uh, under bound states in the absence of impurities, and the impurities effect is written down here. To specify, to get some explicit result, we decided to take a distribution, a Lorentzian distribution of impurities, centered around some finite frequency epsilon naught, and with some width, which is this parameter gamma, which gives also a Lorentzian distribution for this uh, term which enters the spectral function. The result is the, is the following. I just, for simplicity, let me just look at the case where the distribution of impurities in energy is centered at the Fermi energy, so epsilon naught is equal to zero. And we get this uh, doublet structure where these are the under bound states. The width of the distribution of energies enters here as an imaginary contribution and the reminder of the tunneling uh, interaction is in this factor here. Now, the, 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 the physical result which comes out can be understood in a very simple sketch which is given here. So let's look at the structure of, uh, of the um, under bound uh, 
state in the clean limit, so without any in impurity. We know we have pairs of under bound states. These pairs uh, give rise to supercurrent flowing in opposite direction. So you see here that the lowest energy states corresponds to the current flowing along this direction, to the left side, so to speak, whereas the upper, brown, uh, upper under bound state corresponds to, an, uh, to a current flowing in the opposite direction. And this mathematically comes from this J here. If uh, you see on the left-hand side the Fermi distribution, so, so it's clear that if we are at zero temperature or very small temperature, the undrev current comes from mainly the uh, effect due to the lowest undrev bound state. Now, when we have interaction, this picture changes, and in the case of sharp resonances, we get a structure which is intuitive in a sense because we get uh, this type of, uh, of um, level structure, so we have the repulsion uh, of the uh, levels, so the, the, the upper lowest states are a little bit below and a little bit above the uh, amplitude state, but also we get a formation of a doublet close to the Fermi energy. Now, what's peculiar, because of the symmetry of this Hamiltonian, these levels are such that the hybridized level can be directly traced either to the lower or to the upper under bound state. So here you see the same color that you have on the left hand side, gray, gray, black, black, and the gray and black lines correspond to supercurrent flowing in opposite direction. Then, before showing the result, let me anticipate what we can expect from this picture. If we are at zero temperature, uh, let's assume we are at zero temperature, under this condition, we will have current flowing due to this lowest energy state, as we had in the clean limit, but we also get a contribution from the hybridized level with the upper under bound state. This state carries a current which is smaller, which is in the opposite direction. So the overall current will be smaller. And I have to say that this type of hybridization, this is a sketch, of course, this level depends on K, and uh, this type of hybridization uh, is uh, such that uh, the, the splittings are smaller, the closer K is to, the, uh, the closer we are to the total transmission, to tau K equal to one. But these states, or larger transmission, are also the ones which are mainly responsible for the skewness of the, of the current phase relation. So I hope that I convince you that the qualitative picture which comes out, oops, is the following. Here you have the current phase relation. In, uh, in this uh, color, you have the clean limit, and you can see that it's clearly skewed. Then the different colors correspond to have a presence of, 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 of impurities. If we look at the gamma going to zero limit, so let's assume we have really sharp resonances coming from these impurities, you get the dashed, black dashed line here, which it's clearly with a reduced skewness with respect to the, uh, mm, to the clean case. And the origin is precisely the mechanism I, I emphasized. Now we can also look at what happens if we increase the temperature. And here we plot the skewness, which is defined as two minus the maximum, the, va the value of the phase where the current phase relation is maximal uh, over pi minus one. So for very small temperature, let's look at the clean limit first. For very small temperature, we have the zero temperature case, and then we have a monotonic decrease of the skewness. The monotonic decrease of the skewness when we have a bare system simply comes from the fact that we only have a pair of under bound states, and as soon as the higher energy bound state is populated, it gives a current flowing in the opposite direction, so it reduces the skewness, and this takes place monotonically. But in this case, we have this type of structure. So what happens is that, that there is an intermediate frequency scale in which we have first a reduced skewness. Let's look at the black line. So initially, for a very small temperature, we have the reduced skewness with respect to the clean case. And this mainly comes from the presence of these two, or current flowing because of these two levels. Then if we increase a little bit the current, this, uh, sorry, the temperature, this level comes into play. But this gives an opposite contribution to the supercurrent with respect to the other state. So we, get, we approach a, a behavior similar to the one we had 
in the absence of, uh, of impurities. And this gives rise to an increase of the skewness for a while. As soon as the temperature increases further, this further level comes into play, and we have again the analogous picture that we had in the case of the clean system. So a decrease, oops, a decrease, <laughs> do not manage to, to point in the right direction, a decrease of the, of the, of the, of the skewness as temperature is increasing. Okay, this is, uh, I didn't say, uh, this was the, re these were results, sorry, okay. These were results uh, for, um, in case of a finite bias, uh, sorry, a finite uh, doping. And this effect also occurs in the critical current. So the critical current reveals basically the same physics, so it has this non-monotonic behavior as the skewness. Then we pass to the equilibrium supercurrent. Why? Because uh, in the current phase relation, you have an overall effect of all these impurities with this peculiar temperature dependence. But if we want really to make spectroscopy of the presence of these impurities, it's more convenient to look at the supercurrent noise spectrum, the equilibrium spectrum, which we can evaluate. It's written down here. It has a structure which is fully understandable. And we have that the spectral function enters in this, uh, with these two terms uh, with the typical uh, dependence on, on energy. Now, in this case, the processes which come into play are related to the possible transitions between the states. And the transitions are here indicated with the colored uh, arrows. We have a, a transition at high energy, which is the same or most of the same order of magnitude of the transition you had in the clean unit. Then you have transition at intermediate energies, the blue and the green ones. But the green ones, if you look at the uh, Fermi distribution on the left-hand side, are basically forbidden by the Pauli exclusion principle, if you, if you wish, or Pauli blocking, because there's no possibility to tunnel between this pair of levels. And then we have an additional very low frequency component coming from transition between these two doublets. Now we plot on the left-hand side the current spectrum the gray area is the area where we expect to have uh, current noise without any impurities in the clean unit. And this takes place in a finite frequency range, which is of the order of 2 delta naught, roughly. The uh, clean limit is, again, these cyan lines, which you barely see here. What happens if we have also impurity is that we get features at smaller frequencies, precisely those related to these processes I anticipated. And if we look again to the, um, to the let's say, sharp regime where we have uh, resonances, you, get, you see that we get, this is a square root of divergence just because we are in the gamma equal to zero limit, and this, va the value of this frequency can be easily estimated considering how these uh, processes enter the spectral function. And it's quite easy to understand that uh, because of the way they enter the spectral function, we expect uh, these, um, these square root divergences in correspondence to maxima and minima of the differences between the possible transitions. These maxima and minima are related to the extremes of the tunneling uh, amplitude. So, for instance, here we can precisely uh, understand where this first transition takes place, these peaks takes place. Of course, if we have a broader distribution of impurity, we won't have square root divergence, but we have finite width peaks. This is, um, oops, this is, um, this picture applies to the case of um, absence of uh, any, any any doping, but we can also consider what happens in the doped system. This is, the picture is a more involved, uh, but still the physical phenomenon is the one I, I, I introduce, and one can directly count how many transitions one expects. In addition, one more uh, qualitative feature which characterizes the presence of this impurity is the fact that we have a finite frequency, a finite noise also at zero frequency. 
and we can evaluate analytically uh, this uh, finite uh, zero frequency um, uh, current spectrum. It takes this form. It has a linear temperature dependence, which is plausible in the presence of this order. And it's uh, nice to see how this amplitude, that the slope in this case, depends on the parameters of the, uh, of the impurity states, also on the tunneling amplitude or their density, and of course, again, on the transmissivity of the junction. This is the uh, behavior depending on the um, chemical potential. And we also observe a peculiar, uh, a peculiar non-monotonic behavior with increasing the the, um, the width of, the distrib of an energy distribution. This is basically related to the spectral weight at the Fermi energy of these processes. Okay, um, how much time do I have? Five, okay, fine. So in the last five minutes, I will just give a flash, a flavor, or the other possible uh, processes giving rise to uh, current noise in graphene Josephson junction. Um, Actually, graphene Josephson junctions are uh, a, a unique uh, two-dimensional structure to, to, to study, to study uh, noise, and in particular, 1 over F noise. And there is this nice review by Alexander Ballanding giving a really nice overview on this, on this result. Here, just flash on two experimental results, which are closely related to the, to the um, process I'm going to, to describe briefly. One is uh, obtained by this uh, group. Uh, and they, uh, what they consider is the, is the effect of, uh, um, they consider in this uh, uh, graphene, not, it's not a, a Josephson junction, and what they can see is that uh, they obtain one over F noise, and then they, effect, they consider the effect of uh, boron nitride defects in this, in this heterostructure and charge in homogeneity, and they find some anomalous peak in the amplitude of the noise, these are not reported here, which they attribute to impurity states which originate from the carbon atom, which may replace the, the nitrogen site in the HBN crystal. So a model not that far from the one we are considering, whereas these other uh, results are from the experiment of uh, um, Pet Yakonen's group. These are on a, a graphene Josephson junction in the, um, close to the diffusive limit. In this case, they also obtain one over F noise in the critical current, but the mechanism seems to originate from a different effect, which is variation of the proximity-induced gap in the graphene junction. So I would say that the, the problem is still not totally solved. Let me just give a, an hint of how uh, we uh, mm, suggest that critical current noise may originate. The idea is the following. The critical current of the graphene Josephson junction depends on the chemical potential and it has this characteristic shape so that fluctuations, classical fluctuations of the critical current may depend linearly or quadratically on fluctuations of the chemical potential depending on what we would call working point in a sense in a, in a qubit type of language. So it means that depending on the doping we can pass from one regime to the other. But how can we have fluctuations of the chemical potential. Basically, due to the two-dimensional structure of graphene, the chemical potential is related to the square root of the density of carriers. So it's plausible to expect that if we have a mechanism leading to fluctuations of the carrier density in the graphene channel, we will have fluctuations in the chemical potential and therefore fluctuations in the critical current. So this is, a, in a few words, the mechanism we considered. The reason for fluctuations of the carrier density we consider is given by, as I said, the so-called McWhorter model. The idea is sketched here in the case of graphene. So graphene is here, black. This is a substrate. And these uh, spots here are uh, charge traps. So the idea is that in the substrate there may, there may be some charge traps which induce some trapping and detrapping of charges from the graphene channel to these traps with a rate, with a tunneling rate, which depends on the distance of these traps from the graphene layer. If we consider appropriate distribution of these trap uh, rates, we get a, a basically the McWhorter model applied to this specific setup. In the case of the uh, graphene Josephson junction, here in this work we assume that there is a, a gate voltage which fixes the uh, voltage of the uh, graphene, 
So this implies a, a constraint between the fluctuations of the chemical potential and of the carrier density in graphene, which are described <coughs> here. And in particular, you see the fluctuations of the carrier density in graphene is related to fluctuations of the chemical potential of different orders through coefficients which are the quantum capacitance and its derivative, which are parameters which are to a certain extent tunable via the chemical potential and depends also on temperature. This gives rise to fluctuations of the critical current. Here you see that we have fluctuations coming from correlators of different orders. And the prefactor, which are tunable, depends on the critical current derivative and higher order, first and higher order derivatives. They enter the power spectrum actually in this form. So the spectrum is 1 over f. You see the frequency here. But the prefactor depends on the combination of correlators of different orders, which prefactor which we can really predict depending on the, um, on the doping which we have in the system. The similar, a similar structure we have for the current density noise. It is the same. Same structure, different prefactors, I'm over. And here I just give a, a, a snapshot of how the amplitude of the 1 over f noise looks like in this case for the critical current and for the, uh, of, uh, for the um, density of carriers in graphene. And the, the, the take home message is that we may have slightly, no, completely different temperature dependencies, linear for the critical current and cubic or then passing to quadratic for the carrier density. And this effect is entirely due to how the prefactors in the amplitude of this noise behave as a function of the working points so or of the doping and depend also on the type of correlator which enters the, uh, the, the, the noise, which is dominant if you wish. So without commenting that much, let me say that the, the, the message is that for this second part is that uh, um, of this uh, second part, okay, we can get uh, critical current noise due to under level broadening in this case. We can also describe this process as broadening under a level. And it uh, allows uh, really make a, a, a sensing of the correlations which are more relevant uh, for these fluctuations. Hmm? For the other part of the, of, the, um, of, the, of the talk, the model was microscopic. And again, the other take home message is that uh, not only we may have a modification and uh, explain how the current phase relation is modified by this impurity, but we also may have a detailed microscopic spectroscopic evidence of these impurities. Thank you very much. Thank you for the nice talk. So the session is open for questions. Anybody? OK. So this seems like a quite involved calculation. Uh, and uh, I wonder if it's possible to do it also for magnetic impurities, uh, in okay. case there are some on graphene. I'm not sure. Okay, it's complicated, as you said, it's, it's quite involved. I try to keep it as simple as possible, but it's very difficult. We are doing that. We are trying to see what happens for magnetic impurities. Yeah. Right, thank you. Okay, turn it off. <laughs> Up, okay. That's, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, more a technical point. So as you as you pointed out at the very beginning, there is uh, this uh, work by Benaka, yeah, which is basically the Bulgarian of the Gen theory, and then you you get see it's uh, backscattering for the backscattering due to impurities. Um, so is it is would it be possible to within this approach also to get information about the uh, the statistics, or is this something which is um, something that is due to this, uh, to the description you, I mean, this Green's function type of calculation that you are doing. Um, <coughs> okay, the, the, the calculation is in the same spirit, I would say, because the starting point is the Dirac-Bogolubov-Dagen yeah. approach. 
uh, statistics, uh, what do you mean, statistics of impurity state or, or in which sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, statistical properties, you mean? Yes. Okay. Mm, I have to think about it. It's, I don't think it's exactly what we did. Okay. Um, or at least, uh, it, these are fermionic impurities, let's say. Yes, so in this sense, yes. it's, it's, uh, what we obtain comes from, from considering the yes, electrons' yes. Uh, transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but in a way, what you showed is that you have these, uh, due to the impurities, you, you, have, uh, you develop further in-gap states, basically. Yeah. <coughs> and due to time reversal symmetry, they always appear in pairs. And the question is whether you just from, these, from the properties of these levels, sorry, <clears throat> whether this already is, uh, is sufficient to derive most of what you have. This was not clear to me uh, how much, because you could, you could somehow, was the argument that there is some occupation by these, of these levels, and, and, and basically what you see when you consider the skewness as a function of temperature is that uh, it displays basically reflects the structure, this level structure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you could say, uh, well, Let's uh, go to Benaka, and, and as you know, I mean, to get this sublevel structure, you have to solve these uh, nonlinear equations for the uh, for the for the energies, uh, and then do some, say, naive statistics where you oh, thermally okay. populate no, things, and then to derive this from from okay. from this uh, analysis. Is this something okay. that is fair, or, or is this uh, where uh, where does it? Uh, <coughs> we didn't think about it, but I understand what you mean. Uh, Probably one could try to, be, to look at it in this way. What we wanted to do was to start from a microscopic yeah, sure, model. Sure, so it was another, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe sure. it can be a, a, another way of re-deriving this result. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Probably <coughs> yes, probably yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you also for the nice talk. Um, as far as I understand, you considered wide um, junctions, right? Because of that, you yeah, yeah. short and wide. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering, uh, and if you uh, in these wide uh, junctions, you see any signature of the band structure of graphene itself? If if there is something special because you have graphene and not any other uh, two-dimensional thing in between. Okay, I, w I would say that the behaviors close to the charge neutrality point precisely come from the band structure of, of graphene. These are peculiar, but the same type of calculation could be done also with a different spectral density. Which, um, yeah. Is there any sort of? I have a, also. <laughs> so you, no, no, you, you, you go no, first. No, no. <laughs> Good. Uh, so you started from a ballistic graphene, and then you can see the conductance goes down or the critical current goes down. And in the end, do you, uh, will you go towards a diffusive limit where the graphene just becomes a diffusive conductor? Mm, I don't think uh, with a dilute ensemble of the impurities, I, I do not expect that we get there, Eugene. Okay. We, we try to, to, to maintain the ballistic nature, although we did not make any check, but that, 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 that working assumption is like that. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I have a short question yeah. related to the one over F noise. You see, you have on the substrate, you have charge. Yeah. But I mean, why one over F? Because when we have one over F noise, it's, I mean, two levels, or I mean, we are considering some fluctuations. We, why not? I mean, why noise? I mean, from this. Okay, yes, could also be white noise. Now, the idea was that. Um, we consider, that the, as far as the, the 1 over F model, we used uh, the standard uh, McWhorter. So the McWhorter tells you that you have, a, a, let's say, a substrate, which is some irregular type of material, where you have trap distributed randomly. Typically, you have a huge number of these traps, yeah. and uh, they are located randomly, so with the distance which is mm, different. And if you consider the, the typical structure that tunneling amplitude may have, if you simply think to sort of double or multiple well potential, you get naturally a distribution of distances or, and then of tunneling amplitude, which is such to give one over F noise. And since actually one over F noise is, we, we are looking really for this type of model since one over F noise is 
one of the main, or that's been to a certain extent, it I will understand. come out again as a, yeah. as a problem for, for also these this, this gate months of the future, probably. Um, we wanted to see how the critical current is, 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 uh, is modified by this possible process, which probably is not the only one. I mean, okay. in fact, we saw uh, effects related to probably other, other features. But you know, one of our noise, it's, a, it's, a it's still a mystery no, no, already no, I, I in, know, in uh, conventional okay. Joseph's own junction. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank okay. you very much. So we thank Elizabeth. Thank you to all of you. <laughs>